Troy, obviously you put out your, the statement uh, not too long ago, but um, what was your initial reaction to the decision by the WA government to not open up on February 5th? I, I guess one thing we've learned over the past couple of years dealing with the situation is that nothing surprises us anymore from that first time we were impacted on that grand final game back in 2020, having to close the doors to our fans three hours before tip-off to everything we've had to come through since then. Um, whilst not ideal, we just look to regroup as quick as possible and, and try and pivot and, and work through the situation the best as possible. Part of agreeing to go on the road for this, this sort of six-week period was that you had the understanding you'd be back in Perth February 6th for a game. What, what, what happens now? Do you have any clarity at all? When do you get to speak to the Premier? We'll have a number of conversations over the coming days. Obviously, February 6th is still a couple of weeks away, but uh, I've already begun having conversations in the league to see what assistance they can do with potential rescheduling of our home games down the track and things like that. So uh, we'll continue to have those conversations today, tomorrow, next week and so forth until we can come up with a strategy that's going to work for us. And hopefully there will be some flexibility from, from the WA government to ensure that we can have our home games played at some stage before the end of the season. A few of the players left family in Perth. And again, with that expectation, they'd be back in early February. How do you go about um, allaying any concerns from them? And what processes do you have in place to sort of offer that support? Well, I think that's what you just mentioned. The support is the most important part. Um, Unfortunately, we can't allow any fears. Things will change and continue to change and we just need to try and adapt and support the best we can. Um, up at this point, we feel that we have been able to do that and, and that's been our primary focus and will continue to be our primary focus. You're right, there are families here um, and, and it is an extended period of time that the players are away. So we'll continue to have those conversations with the playing group and their families to make sure that we do everything we can to ensure they're supported until the guys return home. And, and do you have any concerns about the well-being of the players and their families considering this change? Well, what I do know is we've got a great, great support staff and medical team, team psychologists. We've got all these tools at our disposal to assist with any situation the players are going through. Um, as Bryce alluded to, they were on the road for a length of time last year, over a month in, in, in Melbourne. Um, and whilst not ideal, um, a number of have been through it before. So I think they'll draw on that experience. And as an organisation, we'll draw on the experiences of the last two years to ensure that we do provide as much support as we can to everyone. Ed, try on that. Scott tweeted last night, as soon as 98.7% of the world's population get their seventh dose and pigs fly, we should be able to come home, provided we isolate for 14 days after nine negative tests. It would appear he's not taking it all that well. Uh, he's got a wife and a couple of kids here. So everyone's talking the talk, but doesn't feel like the atmosphere is that great. Well, Scott's always good for a bit of comedic relief at times, and it's not the first time he's, he's posted a Simpsons reference or the like on social media. I guess everyone has their own ways of, of, of dealing with the initial um, decision and, and outcome. And um, But what I am sure of is the players will be regrouped and focused on, on, on the game tomorrow night. And they have our assurance that we'll do everything we can to ensure that we, we get a positive outcome as best we can. We're not orphans in this. There are a number of sporting teams on the East Coast right now, including the Scorchers and the Glory and the Perth Lynx. So uh, we're in a pretty big boat with some other teams um, and we'll try to bandy together to make sure that we, we try and achieve the best outcome possible. So we hear the Premier often refer back to the fact that the AFL Grand Final was played in Perth and there were games played under those quarantine situations, but they're weekly matches and you guys played multiple games in a week what's what do you need the government to give you to allow the schedule to actually exist in Perth when you're bringing multiple teams in a lot to play a couple of times over several weeks the difference between I guess the AFL grand final now is that we, we have the ability to rack test and that's another level of protection for the community and for our athletes uh, to do that on a daily basis it provides uh, an accurate sort of result of of, of uh, testing COVID, um, whether we can sort of reduce the, the quarantine time needed for a team to come in and play under dirty conditions is another thing. Um, but all these conversations need to be had with the government and, and WA police to see what is possible based on the health advice. And, and hopefully the landscape's changed over the last three, four months where uh, there is a bit more options available to ensure the safety of the community while providing some sort of flexibility. And uh, we'll see how those conversations play out in the coming days.
The uncertainty obviously impacts upon fans as well who have paid for memberships and for, for your front office that are, are trying to work out financial situations as well. How much of a concern is that for you when you're looking through it from a pure financial perspective, both for you and for your fans? It's important that we take each stage one step at a time. And, and the first stage is right now is understanding how we can manage our home game situation. And that will involve conversations with all the stakeholders, including the NBL, WA government, WA police. Um, we are fortunate that we are a sport where you can play more than one game in a week. So if we have to sort of have catch up games towards the back end of the season and play multiple home games over a period of two or three weeks, then we're lucky that we have the ability to do that. So I think we'll work through those initial conversations first and understanding the parameters and landscapes that we will be provided with uh, by the stakeholders. What I do know is the NBL has offered its support in being able to try and accommodate our 14 home games as much as possible. So um, the conversations thus far have been positive, but the important ones with the government and WA police will probably give us a greater indication of what's possible. We're seeing the fixture change often weekly, sometimes daily. Um, when do you need information from the government to be able to go back to the NBL to work out your living arrangements and, and if you're able to come back? Obviously, the sooner the conversations can happen, the better, but we do have a little bit of time before that February 6th sort of home date. So, um, like I said, over the coming days and, and weeks, we'll have as many conversations as possible. It is about collecting all the necessary information we have and, and the medical advice and the flexibility from the different parties and, and working through what the best strategy is based on the conversation with government and NBL and being able to see if we can sort of, if we have to push home games to the back end of the season. That's what we'll focus on to ensure that we get the 14 home games fulfilled at ROC Arena. And this happened just, what, uh, two days, I think it was, since you announced what was going to happen on Feb 6 with an anniversary game, which was as big as, uh, that, that date can't be changed in terms of an anniversary. How big a blow is it for from a historical standpoint, to not be able to play on what was going to be such an important date in club history. Yeah, ideally it all lined up pretty well with playing on the exact date of our first game 40 years ago. Um, but in the overall scheme of things, uh, we'll still have those celebrations when and where we can. Um, the Melbourne Demons had to postpone their unveiling of their, of their Premiership Cup to their fans for a few months. So uh, we'll definitely have that opportunity at some stage to, to celebrate the milestone within front of our fans. Um, when we can, and then obviously we're still uh, we'll have the 40th anniversary team, which we'll announce um, over the coming weeks also. So, in the big scheme of things, um, obviously more important to, to focus on the safety and welfare of the players and their families, and ensuring we get home games. And when we can, we will definitely tie in that celebration the 40 years for sure. Was last night's announcement a surprise? Had you been given any forewarning? Yeah, we hadn't. Um, and in saying that, we, we, we never really get a forewarning um, much at all in the last couple of years. Um, but once I said, as I said before, not really surprising. Um, obviously not ideal, but um, our ability to quickly pivot and, and, and start talking about what we can do from here to, to sort of remedy the situation is what we're focused on. So uh, we'll continue to do that and have those conversations and and so far, as I mentioned, the conversations with the league at least have been positive and where they can help, they will. Tony Pinata, um, your counterpart across at the Glory, said that it, uh, even up until a couple of days ago, they'd been assured by WA police that they'd be allowed back in. Had you had similar assurances uh, in the, in the build-up to yesterday? Not necessarily. I guess we're, uh, all the community was of, of the understanding that the date was February 5. And as we got closer to that date, it, it seemed a bit more reassured. But um, like I said, it, nothing surprises me. And, and while it's not ideal, then we, we just try and do the best we can and, and work with the league, but also with our counterparts to see what ideas that they can sort of come up with and put forward. And I've had some conversations with some already. Um, we are a united group and where we can help each other, we will. Thanks, Just everyone. on that, Troy, on the, the other teams, on the, on the other sports, can you work together to ask the government to provide you with a standard set of rules for summer sports to, to get these teams in from interstate and these games play, whether it's soccer or basketball or AFLW or anything? Well, I think whatever uh, exemptions or flexibility the government provides will be mandated for all those sports. But... Um, and that's been the conversation is what sort of sort of things are each code asking for from the government. And they're obviously very similar. So no doubt the messages that, that we do sort of put across the government will be similar. Um, 
and as a collective, hopefully that that provides some weight to the ability to be able to to sort of be provided with some flexibility from the government. 